Hey everybody, it's Kiwi from Comixology. Thanks for joining us. Um, today I have two amazing artists that I've had the pleasure of knowing for a few years now. We have Abigail Jill Harding and Margot Saltel here with us today to chat about art and working in comics and being a lady in an industry that is obviously uh, you know, predominated by men. So let's get started. Um, how are you ladies doing today? We're doing fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, taking the time to chat with me, of course. Always. Um, so, <laughs> so I wanted to start, you know, back at the beginning. Um, what age did you guys start drawing? Was there like a moment that was like, oh, wait, I'm really good at this. Like I could make a living at this. Uh, was, it, was it a situation like that? Or did you were just drawing for, you know, since you guys could probably walk, I'm guessing. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> who goes first? Oh, um, for me, I had been drawing from, I don't actually rem recall a time where I wasn't drawing, only because my mum introduced me to art really, really early on as a form of communication, because uh, I had a problem with my ears when I was younger. So mm. my mum used to use art as a way to communicate with me, and it sort of caught on and I got a real joy out of it and I could express myself and I remember doing speech therapy and uh, I remember the woman handed me these picture cards and what I had to do was um, visually tell what was going on through the through the artwork that was on this card um, so in a way it's kind of been a real main uh, part of my life really really since really really early on really for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> what about you Marco yeah for me it was uh, also during school because it was my the way uh, for me to not being bullied at school I was drawing for the bullies like hey don't <laughs> hurt me I, I'm, I'm good at drawing so I was drawing portrait and stuff like that during school and I remember copying mangas and stuff, and so, yeah, I always draw, I think. <laughs> um, do either of you, like, have either of you gone to art school? Do you have any formal art training? Uh, I went to a fine art school, but okay. it was more a, a contemporary, contemporary art school, so okay. it was not great for illustration and art. Gotcha. So. Yeah, because I think... Um, I think a lot of people think that they need formal art training to do something like this. And I don't necessarily think that's something that's like a make or break type of thing. So I was just interested to see um, if you guys feel like you missed out by not doing it, or if you think people like r really would, uh, you know, I guess benefit from going to school for something like this specifically for, you know, for sequential art. Uh, I didn't actually, uh, I don't know if it's a form of, or formal teaching at all but um, I tried to keep art in my uh, learning all the way through school. Um, I was quite fortunate that my secondary school had uh, the option of taking a B-Tech diploma, uh, like a first diploma, so it was like 100% coursework but um, that allowed me to go sh uh, into a better um, college position uh, but even then I went into 3D design crafts so the whole kind of idea of concept and design and product um, design I actually fell into comics it wasn't something I even initially thought I'd be doing um, when I went in I actually wanted to be a um, sculptural um, ceramicist I wanted to actually create figures and sculptures and stuff like that because I really loved working with clay um but I went and stayed at uh York Uni which is kind of it has an art sector but it's like a lot of universities and colleges these days it kind of has everything I mean my mum went to a specialist art school um when she was younger but they don't 
really we don't really have those sort of things and I tend to find that art's very much of a personal journey. Uh, you kind of pick up techniques as you go in in education. You don't they might not necessarily work for you, but they um, you might pick up things that will help you in the future if you get what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it wasn't like a I went to a specifically art centered school at all really it's just I went to any uni or college anyone else would have been to really with like but then you also like made sure that you were doing art yes, I guess, the whole time yeah. yeah yeah just made sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hours hours a week was nice in secondary school <laughs> <laughs> um so that kind of leads me to my next question is why comics why this industry um both of you are obviously amazing, even, you know, out of the scope of comic books. So I'm just wondering, uh, yeah, why comics? Uh, for me, it was more uh, an opportunity because uh, before and even now I'm doing more children books. So, mm -hmm. and uh, full illustration and comics was just an opportunity at the moment. So, and maybe next month, next, next, but, yeah, it was more an opportunity. I, I, I'm more a, a French comics and graphic novel reader than a comics series reader, but yeah. My, my fiancé is more into it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, for me, like I said, I actually fell into it, but it was, I always like to tell something in my work or kind of um, express something that's going on. So comics almost seemed um, right. It was right because it is, it's te you know, you're telling stories with images and you're creating those like sequential art. And um, I mean, I had only been reading comics since, or oh, picked up manga when I was like, was it 2012 or maybe 2010 started reading manga and stuff like that and then um comics maybe a few like 2014 2015 so it, it's it's been relatively a new experience for me um so but it's something that i feel very comfortable um with doing in comparison to what i was originally wanting to do um yeah it's it's one of those things that you just kind of fall into it's like oh this is actually quite nice <laughs> to do um but even then how i got into it is a whole different it's a whole story in itself as well <laughs> wow <laughs> we're gonna chat a little bit about that next um so what was your first experience with comics like what what was like your big break, break, big break into the industry? How did you guys get your foot in the door? Um, and like, what are the types of things you've worked on? Mm. Uh, for, for, for me, it was super freaks, my big break. So, <laughs> now, uh, for me, it was because actually a lot of it to do with my local comic book shop, um, traveling man in York. I actually showed my artwork to them. Um, years ago and uh, I remember the manager there at the time was in the um, process of wanting to write his own comics so we um, wanted to kind of put something together. I remember the first thing we wanted to do, it never came to fruition but I remember, I think I've still got a lot of files uh, regarding that story um, but then I moved on to uh, with I remember the opportunity with the anthology for Thought Bubble and um, I ended up doing that with the writer Sam Reed, and it was just like a one page splash and um, it was like that was technically my first big thing really mm -hmm. and then um, Richard Starkins who helped put the anthology together um, he saw the page and um, I remember being, I remember the weekend I 
that week before Thought Bubble, I think, and he was doing a signing there. And I um, went to meet him because they knew, because Richard knew the uh, staff anyway. They were like, you know, they just know it, but they just know everybody. And um, yeah, he said, why don't you bring the portfolio this week? And I said, yeah, I, I, in fa- I plan to. So what I did that weekend at Thought Bubble was like, there I was in like all my Doctor Strange gear. <laughs> and I was just going around with this trolley of portfolios, showing my <laughs> just showing my work uh, to different artists, and I showed it to Richard. And uh, Richard then said, "Oh, would you like to do something for my series Elephant Man?" I was like, "Ah, okay." <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up doing that. Uh, so that was so. It to me, it was like a domino effect. <laughs> mm-hmm. One thing led on to another that led on to another. And um, then we ended up doing uh, Ask for Mercy. So, yeah. (laughs) And then I get the odd cover job and stuff like that. But it's just been like a... It's it's crazy, to be honest. It's a whirlwind, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Um, Marco, how did you um, hook up with Elsa and Pyrrhic for Super Freaks? How did that all come about? Uh, it was a strange uh, meeting on Facebook. It was, <laughs> yeah. And uh, we planned to work on a project together. So mm-hmm. we work on Super Freaks and we went to the New York Comic Con in 2016. And uh, we went to the Comixology office and said, hey, we have a project. And uh, after we went to the convention and I met a lot of artists and uh, Next, the next year we make super freak so that was uh, strange, but that was really great. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Yeah. Um, so both of you, um, obviously, like, like meeting people and keeping friendships, and you know, expanding your circle is like a great way to have opportunity in this industry. Let's talk about um, the importance of like making connections and keeping connections, um, especially being like the lead like obviously there's like not a lot of females in the industry so it's really important obviously to keep those groups of people really close so if you guys could just chat about that for a sec that would be great gosh it is so so important (laughs) um i mean a lot of the connections i have made is just with going to uh conventions and um walking around like especially at the big ones like um mcm uh, I tend to find that going around the artist alleys and um, talking and um, kind of finding out a bit more, even if it is, to be honest, it's been more, mostly for me um, advice, um, some insight. Um, but I, I can't stress enough how, um, I mean, it's a very, everyone seems to know each other. Um, but it is one of those. Um, things where the um, networking can mm-hmm. really dictate a lot of things but it's been generally a good experience on my to be honest yeah for me it's been an, it's been a good experience because you get to see people f- um, at the conventions and um, even even when they just like you know with social media you're like oh like follow me this that and the other or whatever or I'll follow you la 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 and um you tend to kind of find out more what they've done and like um sometimes it can kind of come full circle as well because i've met artists who have asked me to um be involved in doing like cover work for the series they're on or like etc it's been kind of like help each other out a little bit yeah it's been a good experience (laughs) (laughs) so let's I guess get back to the art um how do you find uh you know working on covers um and in you know interiors like uh the process is obviously pretty different as far as like composition goes and probably even like timelines or whatnot um how do you I guess sort of flex your style in order to accommodate both of those types of things? 
Marga, do you want to start? <laughs> go, go, go. go. <laughs> Uh, it's strange, you have to be more uh, fast when you are doing interiors because you have uh, very short times, so it's you have to adapt your artwork, so it's very strange, so I don't know, it's... <laughs> you just have to be uh, flexible, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think my, my, my illustrations are very different in interiors than in covers, so it's very mm -hmm. tricky sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do you like one versus the other? Do you have a preference? I, I prefer covers, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Abs? Um, for, uh, when it comes to doing the interior work, uh, like I'll tend to draw digitally the layouts because it can be easily kind of um, like loose sketches that I can just like add a little bit more on. Um, and then I'll print them out and then I'll use a light board to then pencil and then ink over those layouts um and then i'll scan it in because i color my work as well um so i scan it in and then i color it so it's almost like i'm going over it three times um but like inking tends in like making a page tends to be about between a day a day and a half two days it's I never really spend more than, unless it's like a really detailed splash page or like with a cover, um, mm -hmm. it will take a bit longer because um, that, that extra attention there. Um, but for me, it's like, <laughs> I'll go, f I'll veer from one style to another, depending, um, like uh, doing like more ink washy work. Um, but then for like as for mercy it's um it's lines and then kind of loose light ink washing um and then for other artwork it's like pencils and then digitally colored the pencils it can vary depending on what's the vibe um the atmosphere mm -hmm. you want to portray sometimes um and uh for me, it's, it's, the, it's the decision, actually, to like figure out, okay, what, what, uh, what shall I actually do for this? One, to actually get it made fast enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never like to be, I never like to be too long mm -hmm. on work, unless it's a cover I need a bit of time because I'm balancing that with work, uh, my interior work. Mm. yeah it can vary with the styles mm. um so both of you have very distinguishing styles obviously um they're both very different how do you um i guess adopt or adapt like a certain style um as i think it's pretty especially in comics i guess in just art in general you know you can look at a painting you can look at a comic book page and you kind of already know who the artist is um, so how did you come up with both of your styles? Was this something that developed over time? Uh, it, it developed over time and I think for me it's still developing mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, I learned so much uh, doing sequential art so I developed uh, another style because children's book where it was more uh, simple more uh, you know just a simple shape one color and stuff so I had to improve and to evolve, so I think it it will evolve again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I mean, I, I mean, Marco's right. You know, it is always evolving, <laughs> as it were. Like every drawing you make is gonna be like it's that next stage in what you don't know what your art's gonna end up like, like mm -hmm. five, ten years down the road. But every drawing's gonna be that little step. Um, for me, my the artwork that I've been producing for the last five years, um, um, mostly a lot of it was through um, emotional strain at the time. It was a rough decade for me last, like, yeah. Um, so my art kind of changed with how I was feeling. Um, 
I mean, I remember I was like, I remember doing all of this Naruto fan art and I didn't touch ink. I was actually mortified of it. And I was, so I was mostly doing like pencils and um, cross hatching. Yeah. And uh, but around about 2015, things changed and um, very quickly, but my art kind of went on to darker tones after that. And it's kind of, I've kind of kept that quite consistent, but it's got more refined as the years have gone on. And like with sequential artwork is kind of, like my, it helps a lot, like Margot says. Um, it's like, you're kind of like drawing nearly every day. <laughs> Um, but like you're always learning new stuff about anatomy and uh, perspectives and learning a bit more like about cameras shots and things like that it's, uh, it's you know it, I think after doing doing all the sequential art my artworks you know the artwork gets um, more dynamic mm -hmm. in a way mm, yeah um, do either of you have a favorite piece of art that you've created that you just like absolutely cherish? You're like, this is, this is my best work. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I'd probably say it's a yearly thing. Um, mm -hmm. I tend to have like a piece every year that I kind of, yeah. Um, but a lot of the work I've been doing for uh, my like personal project, uh, Parliament of Rooks. Um, some of the work, some of the pieces I've done for that, um, I really, really love them because I feel like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> that's what yeah. I wanted. Um, I have to. It might be uh, the hunt, um, the one with the deer. Mm -hmm. and he's all like feathers and like looking over his shoulder and looking directly at us I think that's probably one of my favorites so far I have to try and top it though because I have a aggressive uh tend like I just want to be better I want to get better <laughs> so I need to top it what about you Margot uh, in comics, I, I would say the, the two pages uh, I draw for The Wicked and the Divine. Yes. Because it was... Yes. So <laughs> the story was so fun and I really loved the, the book. So I was so proud and to be in the book. So mm -hmm. and the, the story is so, so funny. So It's so great. That is so great. Oh, my God. <laughs> that, that, that is... It was that particular panel with um, was it Kieran and Jamie? Who was it? Just like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the panel <laughs> in the corner, like that was so, much, so much pressure to to draw Jamie and Kieran. So I was like, oh. <laughs> was so great, so great. Um, do either of you have a preference to draw um, digitally or um, you know on an ink and paper? Mm. I like both. Both, both good. Yeah, it depends. On, it depends on the for the project or yeah. Do you have for, more fast, yeah. yeah? Do you have particular yeah. um like tools that you use? Do you have like I know you like colored pencils are a lot, right, Margot? Like yes, the... uh, it's, yeah, it's colored pencil and a pro marker. It's okay. a alcohol uh, marker. So mm -hmm. yeah. And for digitally, it's just uh, the basic tools for the right. digital. <laughs> <laughs> the computer. Yeah, yeah the computer, <laughs> the drawing What tablet. about you, Abby? Do you do... <laughs> Yours are more inky, uh, I think, right? Yeah. Um, I have, like, a... I have a strewn of, pa like, brushes all varying, like, ages. Okay. Like, it doesn't matter, really. It's not what... Mm -hmm. It's... It's... It's not what you got is how you use it really um i have paint brushes that are like some of them are like really old and some of them are kind of like getting to the end of their lives but um <laughs> yeah some of them are kind of like peeling off in chunks of like wood um but they have these really nice kind of raw effects um which is something i really really love about drawing traditionally um and i like to try and keep because of that unpredictability but if you know the medium 
you can you get to know it and uh, you kind of work around um you know oh no mistakes and <laughs> no but you work around it you get to kind of work with it um digital is convenient um it's cleaner um and it is quicker um i mean i use it rather primitively i just you know you've got all these tricks that you can do in photoshop and it's like i probably i don't i just pick out the brush sets and then just like use that and just like i don't i'm one of those people who just doesn't name their layers hardly so i'm there like kind of like checking <laughs> each layer which one was that layer because i can't remember so i'm there yes, kind of turn it off. <laughs> oh gosh yeah but um it's one of those things that um yeah it's it's i like how uh i can be much more fluid with digital i'll be mm -hmm. honest um and the anxiety of um making a mistake that will be hard to remove is non-existent pretty much there um so like it's why i like to draw digitally with the layouts because anatomies and loose dynamic poses and stuff are much more re much easier to execute mm -hmm. without kind of damaging the good paper really and i go to do it with the light box so yeah has, they you, both have their goods and bads really do you ever find that since you know you can erase and start over that you really try to dive in onto like perfection and you kind of don't let it. I feel like that's something I would do is just be like, wait, it could be a little better. Let me race it. Wait, it could be a little better. Is that something you guys come across when you're doing digital? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, when there's a particular, like, like, especially with faces, mm -hmm. when you're trying to execute an emotion and you're just there kind of like pulling all sorts of faces while you're trying to actually execute this face. And you're there for about an hour or two, drawing it and then undoing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just it. I think it's when you have days where you just cannot draw at all, and it's just it. You're there, just kind of like, like <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um. So I want to talk a little bit about um advice is there any piece of advice you would give your younger self about anything about being an artist about being in comic books about life anything like that that you know you wish you had I guess like tr growing up or trying to get into this uh this business hands you hands just hands I hated drawing hands <laughs> when I was younger and I found humans really boring to draw which is completely different now because i love drawing hands and i like drawing, <laughs> <laughs> I <love> drawing people <laughs> um but i te you tend to find that what i would i would say to my younger self was be a bit more open-minded but it's like i like drawing hands um because when i used to draw so much narrative fan art and i was drawing the hands and all that i started to appreciate them more because of that so i think it's just a natural thing that happens um but yeah uh yes oh and feet feet <laughs> as well uh, yeah. they're, they're like the feet hands feet and hands are like they were the bane of me when I was younger. They just, yeah, I, I tried to, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> so I drew animals and dragons and dinosaurs all the time. <laughs> what about you, Margot? Yeah, for me, it was, it's also the same and also draw more men because. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the female figure is so pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And women are better, but yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess we have to give them a chance, you know. <laughs> um, what defines success for you both? Like, 
are you at that point now? Is there a point that you're trying to get to that would, you know, be definitive of like exactly what you thought uh, your career would bring you? Oh, uh, I tend to find that you never know what's around the corner, really. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> things just kind of just happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 See, yeah. things just kind of happen. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, you get to meet and get to know extraordinary people. And I think you, you never know. You just never know, um, really. Uh, I mean... It's, it's it's just one of those things when you just you're doing what you enjoy doing um or you're doing you know you're doing art and stuff you never it's you never know who's watching you never know who's looking at your work and it's like yeah it's it's one of those things that I kind of for me um you never I'm not it, it can be so varied you never know what's going to happen or what's going to go around the corner you know <laughs> oh my god, just there like yes. He's like yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you feel the same way, Marco? Yeah, and and for me the success is just I'm really happy now that I am around awesome people like you two and that's for me the, the best the best way. The best success. I don't care about the the rest. It's people yeah. are more important. Yeah, it's the yeah the people. <laughs> it's a pretty great community of people. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I feel yeah. very lucky for that for sure. Hmm. Um. So what what does the future hold for you, ladies? What can we expect next? Do you have any like projects on the pipeline you want to you know chat about or anything like that? What's going on? Um. Well, we're Richard and I have been working on Ask for Mercy. Um. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think More it's mercy. continuing because uh, <laughs> honestly, this this season's been really good. Uh, seriously enjoyed drawing this season, and I feel like I've progressed better as an artist. But the story's really coming to an its own now, and um, the characters are starting to really become quite complex. And you know, you want to find like even we want to find out more <laughs> so you know we're hoping something uh, might happen down the pipeline with that um mm -hmm. uh i've got rooks on a uh kind of i'm working in the background i kind of hope one day i'll be able to do something with that um uh not much else at the moment um i mean yeah uh, it's just those really at the moment for me that's a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what about you margo yeah for me not much as well <laughs> no i'm just developing more uh you know traditional illustration like you said like we said before yeah and maybe in the future developing more my personal comics or personal projects so yeah well Especially, I like, that. I love the idea that, you know, people want to do their own thing and with the internet being as it is, like, you've got these people who are doing, like, their own projects, like, Kickstarters and, mm -hmm. like, uh, like, the fun, like, the set, like, you know, public funding stuff and people are actually able to pursue those things, whereas when it was just self, you know, it, t I mean, I've known a few people who've done self-published uh, and then uh, also going straight to um, a publisher uh, and pitching those ideas. Um, but I tend to find that the comics landscape is so much broader because you've got like the web comics now as well. So the op there's so much more opportunity with like personal projects and things like that now. So it's exciting stuff. <laughs> Very exciting. Um, any final words of advice or thoughts, ladies, before we wrap it up? Gee. Keep drawing. 
<laughs> never, never, never stop drawing. <laughs> never stop. No. Um, <laughs> and it's like I like the I I, I like to say um, every drawing you make is a step closer to an artist you're not sure you're gonna be like you don't know you're gonna be yet um every every drawing makes you better at what you do even if it's just a few lines on a page a little scribble and stuff it's one step closer to a better artist you're not sure you are yet <laughs> you don't know who you who you don't know you are yet it's kind of like yeah it's yeah that's mine <laughs> i can't say better than that <laughs> yeah i think it's just right. aggressive pursuit, <laughs> aggressive pursuit. <laughs> well thank you both so very much for joining me today um i wish we could be together at thought bubble but this will have to do yeah, for sure now helped. hopefully uh hopefully <laughs> we'll see each other soon um yes and all of you don't forget to follow these lovely ladies. Um, I'll add their handles at the end of the video so you can do that. And don't forget to check out the Thought Bubble Digital Festival at thoughtbubblefestival.com. And that's November 14th and 15th. And it's free and it's for everyone. So don't forget to check it out. It's and thank you again. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.